Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. My name is Jez FM, and I'm the host and producer of this podcast. And a little bit about the podcast. Well, the podcast is the Magical Learning Podcast, which looks at important topics in business and life and sort of presents them in a fun way so that you can absorb the information as best as possible. And today, it's really exciting that you're going to be doing that. You're already here, you're already listening, because we're going to be talking to John Matone. Now, that name may ring a bell. He famously had a book that Steve Jobs read and it changed the way he kind of led. So this is the kind of mind that we're going to be talking to today. Beyond that, he's been recognized as the world's number one executive coach by Global Gurus for the last five out of the last six years. He's also an amazing coach, best-selling author, but we get into all that in the conversation. I'm not going to spend too much time at the top here because I just want you to get into this conversation. So enjoy. As always, uh, have a magical week. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. We've got a very exciting guest, and we'll get to them very shortly. But first, we've got to check in with the regular team, see what's going on and see what they've been up to. So, Graham, you're first on the call today. How are you going this week? Hey, Jess, I'm, I'm good. Uh, good start to the week so far. I'm, I'm up in Canberra. I'm spending time with uh, some of my brothers and uh, with Dad, which, is, uh, which has been good. Uh, and it's rained which uh, Canberra needed. So, yeah, precipitation sometimes can be helpful. Yes, that is true. And uh, it's also raining here in Melbourne. Very exciting. We've got to get a rain check on everybody, I think, at this point now. Um, so let's go go to Danette. Danette, how are you going? What's the precipitation levels where you are? Uh, actually, surprisingly zero at the moment here. So I'm in Evans Head. Um, people will notice this is not my normal background. Uh, my dad had a um, his heart for fib went off last week three times, so he ended up in hospital. Had a um, operation where they put a stent in, and all is good. So yesterday we went to his specialist and gave him the all clear, which is awesome. So I'm flying back to wet, cold Canberra this afternoon because it's about twenty something degrees up here, which is very nice for a winter. I, <laughs> yes, I, just like I to, uh... wish I was there. Sorry, Jess, I'd just like to point out uh, it's 37 degrees in Canberra at the moment. Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And, John, before we get into uh, a bit about yourself, how has your week been? Yeah, it's an incredible week. Uh, we're, we're off to a great start. Um, I was sharing earlier, uh, it feels good not to travel um, a lot. I, I, I'm typically on the road 50%, 60% all over the world. And it just feels good to be around family. Every, everything's really good here. Um, I'm blessed to have uh, uh, our grandchildren around. We've got seven grandchildren. we got another one coming pretty soon here. So a lot of, a lot of good things going on here in the Matone, the Matone family. Well, we're so happy to have you. And I think, you know, people will probably be recognizing your voice. We do, of course, have the amazing John Matone on today uh, for our podcast. Now, uh, I just wanted to highlight a little bit about John Matone. If this is your first time interacting with him, not only is he the world's number one executive coach and coaching authority, uh, which he's been for five out of the last six years, uh, which is amazing, unprecedented. We've also, he's an executive coach, speaker, business leader, best selling author, and founder and chairman of John Matone Global. And he's got a great book, The Intelligent Leader, which I encourage everybody to go read. Um, so, John, I guess today, is there anything else you wanted to highlight for our audience today, or are you happy with that? No, nah, just perfect. Perfect. <laughs> great, great intro. Very honored, to be with, very honored to be with you and uh, Danette and Graham and, and, every, and all the <laughs> listeners who are, are listening in. It's wonderful. Fantastic. Well, we're stoked to have you on. Um, now, today, your topic was intelligent leadership. So before we get into any topic, we like to break down what sort of led you to this topic. So, John, do you want to um, tell us a little bit about this topic before we dive into the questions? Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting uh, journey. I, I, actually, I, I guess if I were to actually identify the starting point, Jez, of intelligent leadership, um, I would point to a book that I wrote that came out in 1996. We're, we're going back some time here, almost 30 years. Uh, and that book was called Success Yourself. And that book uh, was just an absolute incredible failure, Jez. Nobody read the book. I mean, literally, may, maybe three people read the book, but a couple of people who read the book <laughs> ended up being really important people. One person uh, by the name of Steve Jobs who read the book 
years later, about uh, 2010, but before he passed away. But the, the concepts in that book uh, involve the Enneagram. Uh, and the Enneagram is, you know, Enneagram is a Greek word, Ennea, nine gram map. Uh, and uh, I, I wrote a book uh, that really applied the Enneagram, which is pretty pretty ancient way to look at personality to the world of business and leadership. Uh, timing's everything in life. Uh, it didn't work. Uh, and uh, But uh, in 2010, Steve Jobs read the book and was very moved by the book. And um, long story short, it led me to rewrite the book uh, in 2013 into Intelligent Leadership. And that book became a global bestseller. Right. So it's reinforcement of. As we all know, timing's really important in life, you know, so Success Yourself was really way before its time. Uh, it wasn't all that well written. Intelligent leadership was was much better written, much more applied. And uh, so long story short, um, really, if we look at the uh, the starting point of intelligent leadership, it dates back many, many years. But. Practically, we really got our start in 2013. Fantastic. What a great story as well behind that as well. So, John, I think everybody hearing that, they're already getting your personality. We're already excited. So, I think we've got to dive right into the questions because I'm already interested to hear how it goes. So, let's kick off yeah. with Danette. Danette, what's your question and tell us about why you chose it? John, I always have two questions because you know I'm very, very curious. So, my first question is, what behaviors do great leaders display? And I picked this because it's it's important for people, I suppose, to work out where are they at at the moment and always know that they can grow as well. Well, <clears throat> I kind of look at there's a there's an interplay between the soul and the inner core. In the inner core, we look at things like the net character, self concept, thinking patterns, emotional, uh, uh, you know, your 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 emotional uh, makeup. I would say your value system uh, is really important. Your thinking patterns, how strong, vibrant your thinking patterns are, your belief systems, and it, what I've discovered, and it's really not a great discovery. I mean, I'm not the only person who's discovered it, but whatever resides deep within your core flows to the outer core in terms of leadership behaviors, whether you call leadership uh, in the world of business or your family or whatever, whatever, you know. Uh, so whatever we observe and appreciate in people that uh, who, who exhibit uh, strategic thinking, critical thinking, decision making, uh, team leadership, uh, and so on and so forth, um, just uh, and, and, and Danette, you already know this, and Graham, you know this, Jez, you know this. None of this stuff happens uh, by chance. It all flows from a, a very complex uh, connection on the inside. And so intelligent leadership, and my work as an executive coach, really goes to helping leaders better understand what is going on deep within their soul, deep within their inner core, um, that they may not even be aware of. And I've worked with some, you know, I, I say this humbly, I've, I've worked with some of the top uh, government leaders, CEOs in the world uh, in their 60s, even early 70s, Danette, even early 70s. And as a result of going through our work, they say, boy, you know, I never realized I had these incredible gifts and strengths that have been residing. I, I wasn't aware that I had these gifts and strengths and I wasn't even aware of these weaknesses and gaps on the inside. And um, so to answer your question, ultimately, yeah, I mean, you know, when we look at great leadership, we look at obviously people who are visionary, uh, people who are courageous around disrupting the world and making a difference and uh, creating a better world, uh, people who are critical thinkers, people who uh, create an incredible uh collaborative environment, all of those things are really, really important. But the most important thing I think for all of us to understand is it all starts inside. And if you're weak on the inside, right, you're going to be weak on the outside. If you're strong in the inside, you increase your probability of being incredibly strong on the outside. Does that make Love sense? That answer. Yeah, that's a great answer, John. Thank you so much. Beautiful. And then one of the, the things that I love, and I thought that our listeners and viewers, because 
we're recording both, would really um, benefit from was the the concept of leadership maturity. So it's one of the things that I love about the MLEI assessment tool. And I thought, and you talk about it in the book as well. So I thought that it would be really good for leaders to understand the concept. So for many, many years, uh, <clears throat> I've gotten feedback, even as recently as a couple months ago, where somebody says to me, John, what are, you, what are you talking about maturity for? I'm 62 years old. I'm a, I'm a top CEO. I've got, you know, I, I built incredible wealth. I've helped people all over the world. You know, what are you, what are you talking about maturity for? You know, as it relates to leadership and executive maturity. And I'm very direct about this. I, and I, I, I'm really unapologetic about it. I'm pretty strong about it that, um, it doesn't matter what age you are. Uh, maturity applies to each and every one of us. And anybody who's listening in who has children, for example, and it doesn't matter what age those children are. Uh, my wife, Gail and I, we've had four, you know, we've been married 46 years and we've been blessed with four incredible adults. Um, and, and seven grandchildren, uh, and I've traveled the world. And it's very interesting, you know, that um, parents all over the world want the best for their children. Doesn't matter where you live. Doesn't matter where you, where you grow where you grow up. Doesn't matter what religion you, you. We want good things for our children. And there's three things that I think define maturity, uh, and, and I think this will resonate. Uh, with, with everybody listening in. What do we want from our children? They're exactly the same things we want in leadership. One is, are you hungry to learn? We teach our children to grow up to be hungry to learn, that it never ends. We've got to constantly wake up and push the envelope with respect to growing and developing, become the best that we can be. Uh, and, and I think that's an important predictor, you know, that defines maturity. I, th I think that's one lever. I think the other lever is um, agility with respect to change. We want our children to be able to handle disruption, uh, you know, and, and we, we all know as we go through life, there's going to be beautiful things that are going to happen and there's going to be massive setback. We want our children to be resilient and tough and be able to handle those setbacks and good things and be able to um, get back up and continue to move through life. And so I think change agility, I think, uh, I, I guess learning agility would be the, the first one, right? And I think also uh, in the world that we live in today, uh, you got to be nimble with respect to people. Um, and if we can teach our children to be agile with respect to those three, Lo and behold, uh, we end up putting a label on them, which is, yeah, our children have grown up to be relatively mature. It's the same thing in business. Um, and I, I think that's what a lot of companies are struggling with right now is how do, you know, how do we become, uh, how, how do we, how do we maintain our relevance, right? Um, it's not easy. Um, you know, Good the Great, written 24 years ago by, by the great Jim Collins, uh, I think depicts um, how uh, vulnerable uh, organizations are. A lot, of those, a lot of those companies that Jim talked about in that book do not exist anymore. 24, <laughs> it was only 24 years ago, right? I mean, are you serious, right? So we're vulnerable. And I think what mitigates risk is if we can teach leaders and people to be nimble around those things, uh, we we increase our probability of uh, not only them becoming the best that they can be, but also creating that environment where we can stay relevant long term. Great answer. And I loved how you broke it down into those three elements. So thank you, John. I'll hand back to Jez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, that. Great questions. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. I echo that. Great questions. Um, great insights. I'm already taking so many notes. So thank you, John. Um, I'm going to throw to Graham. Graham, what was your question and why'd you pick it? I actually now have two. Um, one is sort of a, 
Yeah, yeah, I know. It's it's astonishing. Um, one was sort of following on from uh, Tanette's second question and this idea of leadership maturity, and I was sort of semi wondering aloud whether you can, uh, on the outside, appear as as an immature, you know, sixty something, and still be a mature leader. But we might actually park that question for another time, John, if that's okay. Um, yeah, my more, sure. slightly more serious question was um, in and, and to put some context around the question our life on planet earth in, in 2024 is fun and uh, messy and confusing and you know, used the word disruption before and, and it's become a bit of a byword for being alive uh, in the last five six years that little thing called COVID caused us some yeah. some challenges, some grief, some opportunities to learn and grow, etc. Uh, and through all of yeah. that, there's, um, for a lot of leaders, this idea that if I'm a leader, then I should know how to lead through all of that, which is flawed thinking in so many ways. So I, I guess my, my question is really... Um, how can, in your experience, how can coaching help us become more intelligent leaders, or perhaps I, I should say, better leaders, through yeah. you know, improving our intelligence? And, and from your perspective, your experience, how does coaching help through all of that? Yeah, to, it's, it's it's great perspective, Graham. I uh, here's my thought on on this stuff. I, first of all, I if you look at the trajectory of uh, coaching in the world today, um, the next seven to eight years, uh, we're looking at just absolutely astronomical growth uh, in the world of not only providing coaching, uh, whether you're an executive coach, business coach, or life coach, the the trends are... Uh, uh, are just absolutely phenomenal. Okay. So the, if you look at the, the mark, let's call it the market cap, you know, on, on coaching, um, anybody who's in coaching right now is going to an incredible opportunity. So that tells you a lot about just, uh, how coaching is resonating, right? Globally, uh, <clears throat> to, to reinforce that, uh, all, all the coaches in the world are raising their hand and saying, well, how do I actually compete in the world of coaching? So therefore, the certification business, uh, you know, if you're going to be a, a coach, you've got to be you got to have credentials. Right. So you're looking at massive growth in the certification business. And so uh, we're sort of at that nexus of my goodness, the next seven or eight years, um, uh, you, you know, we're, we're, we're just never, we're never going to see this again. Uh, so some, something's happening. And I, and I think one of the things that's happening is just this, uh, notion of in the disruptive world that we live in. And Graham, you're right. The pandemic, probably the, at least in, in terms of my lifetime, one of the biggest disruptors ever, right? So. You know, you think about what it did, and, and it also kind of reinforces the strength of the human spirit. How, and I applaud everybody listening in, you know, that my goodness, we're, you know, we're still around, you know, yeah, we're still yeah. around. And it was, it was tough. It was tough for, for, for a couple of years, and, and it continues to be tough. So I think, you know, it kind of reinforces, boy, the strength of the human spirit. That's, that's, that's very, very good for, uh, you know, uh, uh, for, all, for all of us to think about. You know, I, I think that's, that's great. <clears throat> um, I believe in the next 10 years that just about every professional, if they're smart, are going to have, they're going to have a coach. And, uh, you know, just like an athlete, I mean, if you look at any professional athlete, Anywhere in the world, any sport, they're surrounded by multiple coaches. There's a reason yeah, for that yeah. because, right, they, they don't, uh, they need perspective, right? And I think that's what coaching does, Graham. I think coaching brings perspective uh, and you have a choice, you know, uh, as the coachee to accept or reject whatever perspective you're getting. 
But guess what? If you reject it, you also lose an important choice. And I think I think that that's the power of coaching. You know, the best coaches in the world that I've seen, you know, it's not that they have all the answers. You know, uh, it, it's a matter of let me offer a perspective that we can work on together, right? And the, you know, Graham and Danette, Jez, you know, right? Listen, uh, uh, people people are smart. By and large, I mean, people that we're working with are really smart people. They have a perspective. We just got to help unpeel the layers uh, yeah. sometimes yep. uh, to yeah. create some clarity uh, around what it is that's happening and help them see a pathway. That's, you know what I'm saying? We, we got to help people see a pathway to a stronger existence that, that hopefully brings more abundance to them, their families, and, you know what I'm saying, their businesses and communities. So... Uh, I'm really bullish, you know, uh, on uh, what what I believe coaching can bring to the world. Uh, and again, you don't even, you know, what's interesting is, you know, we could we could walk down the street and just be open, just talk to people. And we, again, we don't have enough people doing this. We just we just mm-hmm. got to go to anybody and say, hey, listen, I got a problem. Just having the courage and the vulnerability to open up and just go to somebody. Who's walking down the street? We never met this person, and just say, "Hey, I want to. I, I got a challenge. I got a problem. I'd love to get your input on that." And and guess what? That person may not even know you. They may not know the situation. But my goodness, uh, who knows? Maybe they they share something that uh, you know ignites a light bulb. You know, we just got to be more vulnerable, more open to that. And I think that's what co- the potential of coaching can bring to the world. You know, love it. Love it. Thanks, John. I, I, and Beautiful. I, Beautiful. I, I, I think it also, um, just going back to Danette's question earlier and, and your comments around leadership maturity, that one of the signs of maturity in a leader is that willingness to say, hey, I've got a problem and I don't know how to solve it. Can you help? Rather than just, I don't know what the answer is, but I'll just make it up and hope that it works. Yeah. Brilliant. I Thanks, believe, John. Graham, it's a, it's a, no, listen, it's a great point. I, I'm just going to put a cap on this because to me, it's, uh, to me, it's the igniter to growth in people. Uh, and I learned it late, you know, uh, it took me a long time. I went through many, many iterations. I had my own business from 30 to 40. My wife didn't want me to do the business, uh, went back in the corporate world. And I've shared this many, many times, you know, I, I relaunched Jomatone Global uh, under a different name, 55 years old, I'm 67, I'll be 68 here in September. And I'm very honest, uh, you know, I'm very honest that I was pretty um, selfish, uh, good father, you know, good husband, yeah. good in the world of business. But it finally dawned on me at 55 that... Um, there was more and I, and I could do better in the world, but I needed to be vulnerable, you know, and kind of raise my hand, like you said, right? You got to raise your hand and say, guess what? I'm pretty good, but, but honestly, I'm not the best that I can be. You know what I'm saying? So as soon as you do that, that's the igniter to growth. We need more, you know, we need, and again, I know you, the two of you know this, Jez, you know this too, that listen, we got, we got, that's the leadership gap in the world, in my opinion, is uh, we need more people having the courage to be vulnerable. We need more vulnerability yeah. in the world. You got to show your heart and you got to show your soul. People, people who want to be led are looking for people who have heart and soul. Uh, now's the opportunity to, to show it courageously and, and authentically to people, you know? Love it. Thanks, John. Hey there, it's me, but this isn't part of the regular conversation. This is a quick ad, but it's not an ad for another business. It's actually an ad for Magical Learning, just to highlight some of the things that we're doing here. So, you know, we love to work with businesses and run workshops internally, but one of our big passions is providing information to people in the public. So we're actually running some public workshops. So if you're loving this, you know, we love to spread learning and that's what this podcast is all about, free learning. But We also do love to run public workshops and we do them in person and we also do them online. So at the moment, we're running a bit of a sale and I just thought I'd sort of highlight the topics that we are doing at the moment. 
in case any of them resonate with you and you want to learn a bit more. Because, you know, if you're listening to this, you obviously love developing yourself. This is another way to develop yourself with Danette and Graham facilitating, which means you can ask any questions, but obviously they're awesome to talk to. So here's a quick list of the ones that we have at the moment on sale. We've just put them on sale. So data storytelling. If you struggle to tell stories off of the numbers on an Excel spreadsheet, this is a really important one. Communicating with impact. If you feel like your communication skills could be a little bit better, this is a great one to sort of run. We also run those two as a package deal. That's the communicating with impact and data storytelling uh, package. That, that one can be done online or face-to-face. In fact, all these can be done face-to-face or online. Uh, second last, we've got developing your emotional intelligence. This is a good one if you kind of want to connect with your teammates better, you think you're struggling with interpersonal things at work. That's a really important one. And then finally, we've got finance for non-finance managers. This is one of our most popular courses because Danette used to be an accountant and knows how to explain finance really in a nice and easy way where you don't have to know the numbers. So if any of these are interesting to you, click the link below in the description. It's on our facilitation and training page on the Magical Learning website. But otherwise, everybody, enjoy the rest of the conversation. Yeah, amazing. Um, this is so good, John. I'm ta- I've already taken a full page of notes, so we're just rolling through this. Um, I'm loving this conversation. And I think the next question I think is a good one from Alan uh, to do with kind of what we're talking about here, which is, is growing our inner core something we can do as an individual or do we need a good team around us to help? Well, <clears throat> I think that's a great question from Alan. I, I think the inner core, uh, Alan, is so complicated, uh, you know, because you're looking at a lot of things here that um, typically, uh, unless you've got uh let's say a coach uh, and tools that enable you to go really deep. You got to go deep into your soul. Okay. Um, To uh, uh, get calibrated. uh, There's the word, I guess uh, with, you know, uh, am I self-aware? If you're not self, you're done. Okay. So you, you gotta, you gotta be self-aware. You gotta know what your self-concept is. There's a lot of people in the world who got a big ego Ego is a big, big uh, detriment to becoming the best that you can be. If you get an overactive ego, it's an issue. If you don't believe in yourself, that's an issue. We got, we, we, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got a balanced ego. Uh, your value system has got to be. If you're going to operate uh, beautifully in the world, you got to have a beautiful value system. And some people's value systems, Alan, are messed up. Period. Okay. Character. If character's messed up, you know, uh, you're going to be messed up. So there's a lot of things that reside very, very deep that um, most people do not see. Uh, so to me, Alan, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to uh, move forward and strengthen your inner core unless you are really accurate about what you see on the inside. And to your point, I think, you know, certainly a coach and team, and let's call team family too, right? Um, Unless you're able to involve the people around you, you can't do anything alone in the world today. It's too complicated. Uh, And especially if you look at the soul. Right, the soul's the most complicated thing in the world. So if you're not open to getting um, perspective and also the support of others to help you become the best you can be, um, you can't become the best you can be. Mm, yeah, that's. I mean, that's a great point, and uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. It ties a little bit into um, the coaching thing, but I think all of this makes total sense. So that's great, John. Thank you for that one. Yeah. Thank um, you. I'm going to jump into Kanika's question here, which is, you know, obviously we're talking about intelligent leadership, but I guess at a sort of, at the opposite end of the spectrum, what does unintelligent leadership actually look like? Yeah. Um, A lot of what we see, actually. (laughs) (laughs) So let's kind of reverse the algorithm, right? Just reverse the algorithm. That's all we need to do, right? Uh, Ego, overactive ego. Big one. Um, So I work with, uh, and 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 actually, it makes me better as a coach. You know, I a lot of the lot of like the high level coaching that I'm very humbled 
to be called in on involves overactive ego, right? So um, what's the counterbalance to that is getting somebody to understand and uh, internalize and embrace the power of what it is that we talked about, being vulnerable. And people with an overactive ego don't operate in that world. So how do you get them into that world of vulnerability? There's a lot of different things that you can do, you know. But, um, you know, to me, uh, unintelligent leadership is a complex of, you know, not only overactive ego or not believing in yourself, bad value system, operating with bad character. How about this? Uh, can you imagine a world-class athlete? Before they have a game, let's call it soccer game, basketball game, whatever, right? And there's trepidation in their mind about, I don't know if I can go out and play the game. That's a problem, right? And it's the same thing in the world of leadership and being a parent. If you're operating with a mindset that uh, is going to predict bad behavior, we got a problem here, Right. Um, if your emotions are not balanced, that's a problem. Um, so to me, unintelligent leadership, just like intelligent leadership starts at the core. Uh, and we got too much of that in the world today. Um, and that's, you know, my calling. And I, and I certainly know it's uh, Danette Graham's calling, Jez, your calling to what can we do to help people uh, become more intelligent on the inside and ultimately, if we can polish that, right, cultivate, we need to in, in, ignite, cultivate, and polish those elements. We increase the probability of uh, people showing up. People got to show up. If they're going to play the game, we got to make sure they may not win the game, right? Because the, the game of life is tough. You're, you're going to lose. doesn't matter what, what game we're talking about. But you better show up and you better perform to the ultimate. And when you go back in a locker room, right, you better be drenched in sweat, right? Same thing in the world of parenting or whatever, whatever. We don't have enough people sweat, in my opinion. You got to sweat, period, end of story. We don't have enough people sweat. So that that's what I would describe as unintelligent leadership. Yeah. That is... That's great. Um, there's so much, so much good stuff to take away from that. But I think let's actually jump onto almost the flip side of this. Not exactly the flip side, but Allegra's question is kind of along the same lines, except it's from a slightly different perspective, which is how can you tell if something is going wrong with your leadership style while you are currently a leader? So are there telltale signs that, you know, while you're actually leading, um, there that you may be doing something slightly wrong? It's, it's a wonderful question, Allegra. Right? I would say that, uh, you know, one of the elements that um, I think is a tenet that uh, enables us to course correct is being vigilant. Uh, I talk about it in the book, The Intelligent Leader. There's, there's seven tenets that I believe are really critical, Jez and, and Allegra. Uh, <clears throat> and one of those is you've got to be, and it just, you know, it's interesting to not, we're, uh, Graham, we were talking about the, the, the pandemic, right? And, and, and just, you know, how that was a disruptor, but just how fast the world is going. Uh, it's interesting. People, uh, uh, it's becoming more difficult to be vigilant, to really lock in and be in tune with the impact of what it is that you say, what it is that you do, and the impact that that has on other people. Um, it's almost like a lot of people are uh, have developed an immunity to um, the impact they have on others. And it's the same thing in families. And I think it's important that we uh, strengthen that muscle Allegra, we got to strengthen that muscle and we've got to uh, operate with the notion of when I put my head in the pillow at night, I've got to reflect on my day and call it prayer, call it uh, uh, whatever you want to call it. 
we've we've got to slow down and we got to reflect and ask ourselves, what impact did I have on others today? Did I bring abundance to the world? Did I make the world a better place? Did I, or 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 what did I say to somebody that really I shouldn't have said, right? Uh, and and take accountability for that, and then wake up the next day, Allegra, committed to being better. To to me, we're not. Uh, we're just so busy and we get into this rhythm of life that we don't, we don't take time to number one, be vigilant. And number two, we don't time to reflect. And if you don't do those things, you can't course correct. So um, it's kind of interesting, you know, in the world of executive coaching, it's really, uh, and Danette and Graham, you know this, right? It's, it's disrupt, it's disruptive in and of itself because executive coaching really is designed, if it's really good, to slow down people who are really going at a really quick pace because we want to get them into that zone of being aware and also reflecting because ultimately, um, when you think about like, uh, our soul and the references that we got to tap into that give us strength, like a like an athlete, right? If you're going to go play a game, you better tap into a reference that says, "Hey, you know something? I've done this before," and and so therefore, if I've done it before, I have a belief, right, that I can go out and execute what needs to be executed. Well, in the world of leadership today, uh, if if you don't take time to uh, embolden, uh, there's the word, embolden those references so that you can tap into them, you're done. So um, I don't know if that answers the question, but I'm just kind of thinking that uh, we, we've got we've to strengthen those two things. Being vigilant and reflection enables the references uh, to be developed in our soul that we can access that give us strength. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, that makes total sense to me. I think just that being vigilant is such an important part and having that reflection to be able to even under process what's going on because I, I can imagine it's not that common for some people to consider doing that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, great. Good, good, good. Excellent. <laughs> great. Um. All right, so I'm going to jump into my question here. Uh, and my question was sort of around, say I'm someone who's looking to hire a leader um, what would I be looking for in that hire? And I guess for me, the question from this conversation is, what if I'm looking to hire a leader, are there certain things that I would hope they've already learned at this point? Because it sounds like this is a journey to kind of becoming a leader. Um, yeah. But yeah, what sort of key traits might you be looking for if you were looking to hire a leader? Amazing question, uh, Jez. Uh, you know, aside from, because uh, I believe intellect, you co like cognitive power is important. Uh, it's a complicated world. And I would say, even though I haven't done the studies, uh, I would say that um, if you've got cognitive ability, IQ. Uh, IQ is a predictor, period, end of story. Okay, let's, let's be honest here. You got to be smart, especially in this world today. Um, you got to see somebody who um, has got the, uh, the horsepower, okay, and a lot of people do. I mean, uh, actually, we, we may have too much of it, actually. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Jess? We got, we got so much intellect in the world. What about the heart and soul, right? So that's, to me, those, you know, that, that, those elements of heart and soul might be the biggest predictors. I would be looking for somebody who is a smart person, somebody who is a strategic thinker, somebody who uh, is a critical thinker, who can dissect issues, uh, who's comfortable being really diligent around stuff, but somebody who may not be like a Steve Jobs, who is a creative genius. We don't need creative geniuses. We need one or two, but we need people who are comfortable disrupting, okay? And if you're going to be a great leader, you got to disrupt yourself. You got to disrupt your team, you know? Uh, not in a crazy way, but getting them to see that uh, the island that we're on right now may, may not be the island that we're going to survive on here, right? Next couple of years, another island over here, right? So we got to get over here. And I think the other things that are important would be, um, obviously, you know, when I talk about heart and soul, I'm talking about, you know, some of the uh, uh, elements of, uh, of EQ, 
okay? Self-awareness, uh, people, like people skills, uh, the ability to show your heart, uh, the ability to be authentic. Um, you know, th those are things that are, to me, uh, really, really important. And I think the other thing too is team, team, right? We, it's, it's all about team. And it doesn't matter who you are in the world today. If you can't work as part of a team and build something very special, but creating a masterpiece, right? Most people wake up, go through the whole life. I really believe that we're all put on the earth to create a masterpiece. I really believe that. I don't care who you are, where you were born. We're, 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 we're put on the earth to create a masterpiece, period, end of story. Most people fall incredibly short of creating the masterpiece they're intended to create. You can't create a masterpiece alone. You got to do it with people, right? So if I'm looking for a leader... Same thing as a parent in a family, right? You got to you gotta create a masterpiece in a family. And so uh, you can't do it alone. You, you got to do it as part of a team. So those are the things, Jez, that I think are really, really critical. Uh, you know what I'm saying? For all of us. Yeah, and it, you know, it makes total sense because it's what I would hopefully look for in a leader is what you're saying you know um all these things the heart and soul the iq um you know is diligent likes disruption i love that idea of the island we're on at the moment may not be the island that we end up on i think that that's a great way to look at it um yeah um i, I think the thing so we've, we've gone through almost all our questions but we're actually running out of time so john we may have to have you on in the future at some point to get through more um because i think we've got to get some wrap-up questions here so so i guess um i'll start with you graham any final thoughts on today's conversation and intelligence leadership um where to start where to start i think um john great to see you again great to have you on thanks for your time and wisdom um Incredible. for me Great, what, one of, and just came back to the the conversation we were sharing earlier about um the value of coaching and i i sort of look at um and you you, you mentioned world-class athletes uh and they all have one or more coaches behind them and and team um and i often draw sort of an analogy between coaching executives and business leaders and business owners and coaching a sporting team and absolutely any of the hugely successful coaches that i can think of like just in, in sport within australia for argument's sake some of our football coaches, sure uh, and then i think of somebody like john wooden um, college basketball coach in the u.s legendary right. and i don't know for sure but i'm reasonably certain chess might know because he follows basketball more than i do um but i don't believe john wooden was an exceptional basketball player all of the great and and huge the most successful sporting coaches um that i know of around the world were never great players themselves and that, for me that's that huge difference between mentoring and coaching mentoring if you want to be mentored by somebody it's, it's like if you want to learn a skill learn from the best but if you want to be coached the idea is you're not going to be coached by a steve jobs or the ceo of the biggest company in the world that's not coaching at all so it, it's it's exactly. getting away from that coaching is all about teaching me a new skill and i love your thing around perspective and and you know some of the the, the best tools that are good coach brings to an engagement are questions that I can't think of myself as a CEO. Um, so no, I, I, it's amazing I started out being really clear on what I wanted to say and then just got completely sidetracked. But um, <laughs> hey, it's been wonderful having you. I need a coach, clearly. I need a coach to help me with my <laughs> questions and wrapping up at the end. Um, I, I think I'll just hit the pin there. I love the team thing, by the way towards the end there we were talking about team our heart and soul and then team i think that's critical so john thank you thank you i'm so honored graham and i i'm i'm excited we finally were able to do this and uh you know uh i, I look forward to you know if you if you if the team wants me back i would love to to do another one of these very very special great questions um and uh it's just great to get reconnected, Graham, with, with you yeah. and, and Danette. It's very, very it's, special. And Jez, great to meet you. Uh, you're, you're a critical part of the team now, huh? That's great. Fantastic. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. Okay.
Awesome. Well, I might grab um Danette's final thoughts. Um, is that? Oh, did you have anything else, Graham? There. No, nah, all good. Cool. Um, well, let's go to Danette. Danette, any final thoughts on today's conversation and intelligent leadership? As always, John, I go away from our conversations just my brain going Woo, with lots of great <laughs> possibilities, and I really yeah. love. Yeah, you know, the whole thing about that inner core, because without that awareness of your inner core, there are so many things that trigger outside that stop people um, bringing their best potential to create a better world. And um, I really loved the the three things around maturity, around um, agility to learn, agility um, to be able to change, and also that agility around our people. And I think just like Graham was saying before, that whole theme of team, that we can't yeah. do it. If we want to, someone told me this quote, if if you want to go far, go alone. But if, sorry, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with others. And I think this whole concept of being able to continue to know that the only way we're going to get to our best version of ourselves is to work with others to seek that feedback to be vulnerable with others. So totally enjoyed the conversation um, and thank you so much. Great to see you. And you know I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> amazing, Danette. Uh, feel the same way. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Thank yeah, you so fantastic. much. It's it's been I I agree with what everyone's been saying and I mean I've taken two pages of notes I've jotted down so much I mean the thing about being weak on the inside is also being weak on the outside that to me had a sort of level of resonance and also talking about sort of the way that egos and unbalanced emotions can sort of distort people's ability to be a good leader and stuff this has all been so interesting I've, yeah like I said I've taken a heap of notes um, so I want to thank you so much for being on the podcast um, John before we go did, did you have any final thoughts on today's conversation and just the topic of intelligent leadership the only thing I want to say is first of all I'm very humbled to to get reunited with uh, two amazing people and uh, uh, listen Jez great to meet you and uh, you know I uh, just just to kind of reinforce this team thing, you know, I, I always talk about with uh, our team and, and the coaches that we, you know, we we certify all over the world that um, as we we grow together, we go together, you know, and uh, we we really can't. Uh, the world's too complicated. We've got to do it together, and we. Um, you know, there's a certain, we have a little tagline at John Matone Global. We want to change the world, period, end of story. You know, that's what motivates me, has been motivating me for years. And as I get older, it just, I get, I'm getting afraid that I'm not going to be able to achieve the ultimate mission, which is to change the world. And uh, so I know I can't do it alone. And the more that, um, we have everybody sort of in that family, Jez, connected. We, we, can, we can change the world because we do have a massive leadership gap in the world. We got to solve it. We really do, you know, and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to stop until I'm, you know, as long as I stay healthy, I'm going to keep, keep pushing this along because uh, I think we can change the world. I really do. I'm very, very positive about that. And we got to do it together. So just to reinforce that team, the team orientation, you know? Absolutely. I love that um, that outlook. What a great sort of uh, message to leave us on. And to be honest, John, I've, I, it's always good having a guest that we can really have a big laugh and we can also learn so much stuff. So, so you've been just an amazing guest today. I'm sure people have been listening to this and feeling the same way. So do you have any way you'd like to direct people? They've been listening to this. They're like, I need to get in contact with John. Where's the best place for them to reach yeah, you and any just, resources? Listen, just, they, they just contact uh, Graham and Danette. Just, just connect with Graham and Danette and we go from there. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, John, thank you so much for being on. Danette and Graham, amazing questions. Uh, to the Magical Learning team, also great questions. Um, I want to thank everybody that's been listening and sharing the podcast. And as, as always, everybody, have a magical week. <laughs>